In today's show, we're looking at the waiver wire for fantasy basketball. What makes sense for the rest of the week? Who's getting added? Who's getting dropped? How we're approaching it all? Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble on TikTok at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So we look at the waiver wire, waiver wire show here, most added, most dropped players, all that sort of stuff. But as we're well aware, like I'm focusing mainly on this for stuff after Wednesday's games. On Wednesday stuff, I did a streaming show yesterday. I'll do the pregame show today where you can do last minute sort of adjustments for guys that are in or out. We're sort of looking more at the rest of this week with a slight look into to next week. So we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, yeah, we'll just get straight into it. And then we'll talk about what we need to talk about. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right. The number one player <clears throat> that has been added over the last 24 hours is Nicola Batum. Big Nico Batum of the LA Clippers because he is their starting power forward uh, moving forward. Now, there's a couple of things that have added into this. There's a little bit of chasing going on because he hit eight threes and shot 80% last game and looked great. That is obviously not real. But the role is, and he might play 30 minutes a night as we move forward. Now, he could average nine points a game with six rebounds, three assists, a steal, a block, two threes. Like that, that's That's what he could do. That's not that's not useless. It's not what he did last game, but it's not useless. The other thing that might be complicating somewhat is the return of Norman Powell, which looks like it's either coming today or in their next game. But I still think that Batum's got some value, but we have to be really cautious about overrating what he did last game uh, and moving that forward. The other thing that factors into this is the Clippers are one of very few teams who play on a low-volume day moving forward. There's only eight low-volume... Was only Yeah, it's only eight... Sorry, four low-volume games left for this week, and there's only seven teams that play in them, and the Clippers are one of them. Clippers, Nuggets, Celtics, Pelicans. Who else has got them? Anyway, there's a couple other teams who have those um, low-volume games. There's not huge amounts of them. So the value, especially if your league ends this week, of just getting one playable game out of someone like Batum, would he even be startable on a high-volume day? And That's really debatable. And that's one of the key things I want to get in onto today's show is I'm not going to do like must-roster players or droppable players. But you've got to really look at your team. Look at your uh, lineup on Friday. Look at your lineup on Sunday. And the guys that you don't start, and I don't know who that's going to be. For some of you, that might be someone like DeAnthony Melton. For some of you, that might be, like, who knows, Bruce Bruce Brown. That's a bad example because he plays on a low-volume day. But whoever is sitting on your bench, not all of those guys, because you might have someone from your starting lineup that sits on Friday and you can switch that guy in. But your worst or second and second-worst player on your bench on Friday and Sunday Drop them. Unless they play Thursday, Saturday, you, you drop them because you're not going to use them for the rest of the week. And yes, you might be, they might have great schedules next week, all that sort of stuff, but you got to win this week. And you got to try and make that move to maybe it is to slide someone in Wednesday or else it's getting a, an extra game on Thursday or Friday. Because even if it is, Batum who plays 27 minutes and goes 6-6-2 six, six, and two with a steal, 6-6-2 six, six, and two is better than 0-0-0. Zero, zero, and zero. It's all adding something. And so have a real look. Look at whoever you're going to drop. Look on Friday, Sunday. Go to those those lineups, set them, look at your bench. You go, ah, well, I'm not going to play this bloke on Friday or Sunday. What's he doing on my roster? That's, you know, if we're, if we're getting in before Wednesday's games, that's five days where I'm not using this bloke. Or he might actually play today and he might be in your lineup today. So maybe you wait until after Wednesday's games. But that is how you need to be approaching who you're dropping. Quentin Grimes is one of the most added players. And I think find that one a little bit interesting. Has he played really well? Yeah, he has. The last three games or so have been very, very strong from Quentin Grimes. Really, really strong. This briefcase and this haircut. I, the, the thing is that we just don't know about Jalen Brunson. Like if Brunson plays today, Grimes is probably going to play 20 minutes or 22 minutes. 
He's played 38 and 38 the last two games. He did play 26 in that game against the Heat, which was a game that quickly only played 19. Again, that was a little bit weird. But otherwise, he's 21, 20, 20, 25 when he, when he plays when Brunson's there. And even that 25 actually was a game that Brunson was out. And even that, it was a 20 when Brunson was out. So that doesn't even, that's not even right. So to me, sure, Grimes is fine to add. But if Brunson plays, he's not a startable player today. So I think we're a little bit reactive to the last two games where he's been really strong. And he could be just be an absolute nothing. TJ McConnell, yep, I, I think that's a really strong add. I don't believe that Tyrese Halliburton is playing again this season. Both him and Buddy Heald have been ruled out today. That's two in a row for Halliburton. Um, and neither of them have been back-to-back. So it's two in a row for Heald with an illness. So McConnell is going to be useful. So yeah, no problem adding him. Marvin Bagley, absolutely as well. They're feeding a lot of shots and a lot of minutes into him. 36 minutes of Marvin Bagley, while it's bad for basketball and bad for our eyes, it is actually enough for him to accumulate enough stats to make a difference in fantasy. Luke Kennard's an interesting one. He has been playing really well. And the way their lineup is set today with Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson, and Tyus Jones all doubtful, and Tillman and Concha are questionable, he's going to carry a pretty sizable load. A lot of what Kennard is doing is probably not realistic to continue moving forward where he's been a top 50 player over the last week. I don't really see that in his future. But for Wednesday's game, sure. Again, like nearly everybody, he plays Friday, Sunday. So is Kennard actually a startable guy in those days? Almost definitely not. But for Wednesday, sure. Emmanuel quickly one of the most added players. Yeah, like if Brunson's out, he's awesome. You probably should hold him anyway. But there has been a pattern that when he comes off the bench quickly, he's very much a borderline 12-team league player. So he might be a guy that if Brunson's out Wednesday, he's going to go off. But if Brunson plays Friday, Sunday, quickly might be that player that I talked about earlier who's sitting on your bench and is not getting played, and then you drop him. Grayson Allen, part of the appeal of adding Grayson Allen, I would think, is the back-to-back. They play Thursday, and there's going to be a chance that Middleton and Ingles or Giannis sits those one of those games. Um, Allen is probably going to play them. You might use him Wednesday. You'll definitely use him Thursday, so there is value in that. And then the other one is Jalen Duran, who I do think that even on a high-volume day, you probably start him. So you can get three games out of him rest of the week. He's clearly better than James Wiseman. But I do not trust Dwayne O'Casey to play Wiseman the big minutes. Or no, to play, not Wiseman, Jesus, to play during the big minutes every game. Yes, he's played 25 and 28 the last two. But what if he plays 20? That is a worry. But, you know, I, I do think he is a pretty solid add in this situation. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. You guys play fantasy basketball. I play fantasy basketball. So what do us nerds, sorry, what do us cool guys love doing? We love building NBA teams. We love doing trades. We love picking up players of free agency. We love planning out rosters. We love winning championships and doing it by controlling a franchise. So you know what? Here we are. This is your chance to run an NBA-like situation. You deal with challenging personalities, toxic social media posts, troubling pregame or postgame comments, Hiring coaches, assistants, hopefully not Dwayne Casey, making draft picks. You do it all on Ultimate Pro Basketball GM in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free and playable offline. You play on the go, as you want, when you want to. Locked On Fantasy Basketball listeners also get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. Download the game, go to probasketballgm.com, scan the code that's on your screen, or look it up on the app stores. That's probasketballgm.com. The game is Ultimate Basketball GM. Start your dynasty today. Let's go to the most dropped players. Let's see how much we agree here. Dennis Smith Jr. Yeah, look, we can re-add him if we need to, but that late scratch yesterday was a killer. They don't play now until Friday, Sunday, so what's the point of holding on to him? I don't know if he's going to play. Would he be startable on Friday, Sunday? Probably, but I don't know that. It's Their team remains up in the air. I don't know whether Ubre, Rogier, or Haywood are playing again. I'd say, you know, if I had to guess, they aren't. Smith, I don't have any idea because that injury was nothing. And of course, because it's the Charlotte Hornets, we get no indication of what anything is and what anything means on that team. So yeah, absolutely no problem. Devin Vassell dropped, yeah. I love Devin Vassell, 
But yet, they were already looming as a drop at the start of this week. No games until Wednesday. Wednesday, Friday, Sunday only schedule and the likelihood that everyone plays only two games. Well, Vassell, Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Sohan have already been ruled out for Wednesday's game. They probably do play Friday, Sunday, but again, to drop, to get someone in Wednesday, to play someone Thursday, no problem. If you want to restream Vassell or Johnson or you know, Sohan or whatever on Friday or Sunday, go ahead. But getting the drop in early, which you should have probably done before Monday, we understand that someone was going, these guys were going to only play two games this week, maximum two games. That would have been the move. Taurus Halliburton's one of the most dropped players. Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't feel like he's going to be playing. Even if, well, if, even if he does play, say, some games, it doesn't feel like he's going to play there. How many games do they actually have left? They've got five games left after today, and he's already ruled out today. I would bet money he doesn't play five games for the rest of the season. Yes, he's a first-round player, um, but what's the chances that he plays? Got to be less than 50%, and sometimes you've got to make hard cuts. You have to. It's hard, and we don't know what's even going on with Miles Turner there, but <clears throat> it's hard. Trenton Watford. Yeah, he was in prime position to be awesome, much like last season, and he's hurt, and he's doubtful again Wednesday, and he prob- if he was healthy, he would be a startable player on Friday, Sunday but I don't know if he is. Move on. Maybe get someone Wednesday, get someone Thursday, get someone Saturday. It's better than uncertainty around Friday, Sunday. Karis Levert dropped. Yep. Und- totally understandable. Dracaris. He was playing well on unsustainable numbers, but the real value in him is when Garland or Mitchell sits. Um, there is a chance that Mitchell has to miss some time. He did sprain his ankle last game. Hopefully that ends up being okay. There hasn't been any update on that to say that he's going to miss, but that was mentioned post-game and we saw it happen in-game. Um, but they don't play until Friday, Sunday. So, like, yeah, no point holding there. Come on, Looney. Um, again, Friday, Sunday, off the bench last game. Always going to be a rebound streamer, but, you know, we don't care that much there. Cole Anthony, same. No game until Friday, Sunday. He's a fringy guy anyway. See you later. Interestingly, Max Struess has been dropped when he plays today. I don't know why you would add Max Struess when they've got a back-to-back and then drop him halfway through the back-to-back. Was he very good yesterday? No. He wasn't, but it's wasting an ad. You've already got him sitting there with a game. You've got Gabe Vincent and Kyle Lowry both questionable today, although Lowry was ruled out and now he's been upgraded to questionable. They're both sitting there, maybe not playing. Yeah, Jimmy Butler's likely to return, but Struess can still play 30 minutes. It's just a waste. That one, as much as I don't think Max Struess is a guy we hold, that's an absolute waste of a move. That's the sort of shit that costs you. And the other thing is, is Miami, they play on Saturday. Their next game is Saturday. So they play on a low-volume day. I'm not saying you would have to hold him through that. You'd rather get someone in on Thursday on their low volume day than another one on Saturday. But dropping Struis now, that's the sort of stuff that's pretty poor, I think, in managing your roster. Again, we're trying to get maximum games for minimum moves. Let's go to shutdown watch. A lot of the same stuff than when we did this on Monday. The Hornets, we're going to put Ubre and Rogier on that list. I am going to throw Gordon Hayward on that list as well. I do not expect those guys to play the rest of the season, but they're not going to tell us that. I don't expect them to play. The Pistons, Bogdanovich, nobody has mentioned a single thing about him or Alec Burks. They are out for the season. They have been for weeks, but nobody tells us, so that's sick. Well, there's also Rocket Rodney Magruder I'm going to throw on that list. Rocket, 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 we can't think. We can't think. Sorry, come, on, come on, come on, come on. Um, yeah, I don't know that he plays again this season. For the Pacers, it's pretty clear it's Turner and Halliburton, and I am going to throw Buddy Heald in there because Heald was out with an illness. He was upgraded to questionable with the illness, and now he's back out again. You would think with an illness, like if you're feeling sick and you get upgraded to questionable, it's trending in the right direction, right? Like unlikely that illnesses start to get better and then get worse again. I wouldn't have thought that's the usual progression there. I don't know that that's the case. Heald's likeliness of a shutdown is much lower, but they already had started that move by moving him to the bench, which is already an indication, hey, we're going to see some other guys here. And now sitting him out makes me think, yeah, maybe he's done here. So I would say, look, if Turner doesn't play today, let's just put a line through Turner and Halliburton and he would become 50-50 to me. The Blazers, we've already heard about Damian Lillard. Well, you already heard five days before, but other general populace heard about Lillard being shut down. And I'm telling you now, Simons, Nurkic, and Grant are done, even though no one in the mainstream media is reporting that. Um, the Spurs, everyone's at risk. Everyone's at, I think Sohan's actually at risk for never playing again this season. I think he's cooked. I think he, I think he actually might be done. I think the other guys like Johnson, Vassell, um, Langford, Graham, Jones, Collins, those guys are maybe not going to 
finish the season up or get told they're going to finish the season up, but they're going to play every second game rest of season would be my guess for those guys. For the uh, Jazz, we've got Clarkson and Sexton out again. Um, I don't think that they're playing again this season, but I wouldn't be shocked if Sexton made a return. And then absolutely no surprise to anybody, Lowry Markinen was ruled out today. <clears throat> I told you this when he came back on Monday against Phoenix. He played and said there is he's definitely going to appear in the injury report for Wednesday against the Spurs. He might return and play Friday against the Celtics, and then he probably sits against the Nets. He probably sits against the Lakers. Then they've got Thunder, Nuggets, Lakers. So he might play one or two games at the end, but he also could just be done for the season. So I think Markkinen might get one to two more games in. Probably plays Friday. Um, maybe plays one or two next week. But that's unreliable. We don't know. Markkinen has played now two out of his last six games. It's really, look, he's awesome, but it's really hard to rely upon when we don't know if he's going to play. And again, if you need to make a move, I, if your league ends this weekend, I, I'd be really, really cautious about, about dropping him. But I also think that he probably plays maximum one game this week. Is that enough for a guy that good? Maybe. It's a really tough call. I would like to hold to hear more, but I just fear that we don't. I think Alinek is also at risk at some point. He's not there yet of sitting. For the Wizards, I don't think we're going to see Beal or Kuzma again this season. I think we will continue to see Porzingis, but I don't think Beal and Kuzma are going to play. And for the Rockets, the only real guy I think we're going to have out is Jay Sean Tate. Even the wild thing's gone well. I can't do much about that. Um, I just don't think he's playing again this season. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangio. College basketball, the tournament. It's We hit the crescendo. We're at the peak. And there's no better time to get in on the action or no better place to get in on the action than Fangil, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, Fangil is giving new customers a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Go to Fangil.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. A no sweat first bet gives you $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Once you go there, you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to whatever team you think is going to be cutting down the nets. South Carolina is a raging favorite in the women's tournament. UConn's a favorite for the men's, not quite as, not quite as um, raging. That doesn't sound right. But anyway, the most common finals matchup you can bet on, on Fangio, or the, the favorite matchup is Connecticut and San Diego State. That's a plus 230. So you've got pretty strong odds for a lot of this. What about San Diego State over Miami as the exact national title? That's a plus 1,000. Wow. All right, we can check that out over at Fangio. So don't miss your shot at a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join Fangio today. Just go to fangio.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with Fangio and don't forget to gamble responsibly. Let's look at some players who are in the top 100 over the last week. And you'll see a lot of names who are on the most added players list here as well. Quentin Grimes, yeah. But context is important. We've heard the context. We know the context. Brunson was out. So yeah, he's been a top 100 player. Is that a guarantee that it continues? No. Nick Batum's top 100, obviously fueled by that last game. Is he worth an ad? Yeah, but is it likely to continue at that level? Of course it isn't, but he is worth an ad. Luke Kennard's been killing it. There has been obviously situations that have contributed to that with players out, but the players are out again today, so that's fine. Denny Avdia, that's one where I feel absolutely, well, not absolutely rock solid, but pretty rock solid of him continuing along those that line because the players that are out probably aren't returning. Nas Reed. Towns out last game did help, but he has been playing 20 minutes for like seven, eight consecutive games, even with Towns there. We'll get, we'll continue to get more data about how they run things, but I think he's got a sizable role. He's been really good. The big stiffy, the five-minute man, Bones Highlands, playing really well. But does Norman Powell's return just take him out of the rotation? I think there's a, a legitimate chance that's the case. If we hear Powell is ruled out today, then I'd be okay with trying the big stiffy. And the positive for Highland is they do play Saturday. But again, he might play literally zero minutes in that game. Because Ty Lu said, yeah, when Powell returns, we're running a nine-man rotation. You know what that means? It means someone's not playing. And the player who's not going to play is going to be Bones Highland. So unless Lou goes back on his word there, I don't know that he's going to be useful. Dennis Schroeder has been a really good option. But Genzo Russell is coming back today. LeBron is playing. Um, hard for me to look at Schroeder as a must roster play. Well, Xavier T. Ullman, last two games have been amazing. Unbelievably good. Yeah, he's back on the menu, but he's questionable today. So if he's out today, then yeah, is he actually worth holding through zeros? Probably not. 
His minutes have been a little bit, by a little bit all over the place. I mean, a lot all over the place. 35, 31, 20, 19, 26 minutes, 32, 19 minutes, 23 minutes, all over the shop. And it's, uh, I I know some people say, believe that it's matchup based. I don't really think that it is. To me, it's, you know, pretty random. Like you play 32 minutes against the Warriors who go small all the time. Okay, cool. You play 19 against the Rockets. You play 19 against the Spurs. You play 23 against Bam Adebayo. You play 25 against the Mavericks. Like I don't. To me, it's really, really random. It's not big men need Tillman or you exploit. It's just whatever Jenkins feels like at the time, which makes it hard for us. But he's playing well at the moment. If you look at the rest of the week, some guys that we can look at. Now, what I did t- look at here is we have to pay it. This is for after Wednesday. We have to pay attention to the 13 game Fridays and Sundays. It's annoying that I have to keep talking about this, but it's just the reality of the situation, right? You can go, I think. He sat last game, but you can go and add Mark Williams. Oh, hi, Mark. Because the, the Hornets, well, you can consider it. The Hornets play Friday, Sunday, right? Shit. But Williams is good enough, I think, in those two games that you would add him and you would start him immediately. Is the upgrade for him over who you would have started in his place enough to sacrifice an ad that you could have used for a Thursday, Saturday? I don't know. Like, I'd still prefer to have a Josh Richardson and actually play those two bonus games versus switching one game for another game but Williams is good enough. I've got KCP and Bruce Brown on that list because they have a low volume game coming up. They're probably not going to be startable on Friday and Sunday. And KCP himself has been struggling quite a bit, but they play Thursday. So you can add them for Thursday. There's value in that. Marvin Bagley, probably good enough to start on Friday and Sunday, but the same story with Mark Williams. Like, is he good enough? Is the advantage of him over who your bench player is enough to justify adding him over a guy that plays like a KCP or a Brown. Or, guys, Thomas Bryant might be an option on Thursday because Jokic is listed questionable. If Jokic misses, Tom Bryant's going to be an excellent stream. Um, Drew Eubanks, same as Bagley, same as Williams, Friday, Sunday. But he's good enough to start. Josh Richardson, give him the double asterisk there because they play Thursday, Saturday. Richardson, 21 minutes a night. What if he, if he goes 10, 4, 2, 2 steals, 2 threes? That's bloody good as two bonus games. Najee Marshall's got the double as well. And Marshall might not do much. He might go, yeah, eight, two triples, three rebounds, one assist. But 16, six, and two with four threes is really good as bonus games because that's what they are. They're bonus games. You're not replacing someone on your roster with someone. You're adding to your totals. And then there's Nico Batum, who's on that list as well. The Clippers have the extra, the, the low volume game. Now, it doesn't come until Saturday, so you've got to wait a little bit there and you miss the Thursday window. Is Batum even startable on their Wednesday, Friday, Saturday? I don't think he would be on Friday. He probably is on Wednesday and he definitely would be Saturday. So you probably do get two games out of Batum if you're actioning this before Wednesday's, uh, Wednesday's games. Some other names to look at. We go to Indiana, Andrew Nempard. Look, there's a lot of options there with Halliburton likely done, with Turner likely done. We've got Nempard. We've got TJ McConnell as a great ad. We've got Isaiah Jackson. We've got Jalen Smith. We've got Jordan Nwora. We've also got Aaron Neesmith. Neesmith I'd have at the bottom of that group. But all those other guys become 12-team stream options if it makes sense for your team. Now, McConnell and Jackson are probably guys that are startable on the high-volume days. Nempard, borderline. Then we go to Norman Powell, who's available for the Clippers, and he might be an excellent option. So I think there's you know, probably 85% chance he's available and ready to play on Saturday. Whether he plays Wednesday or Friday, I don't know, and it doesn't actually matter that much on Friday. And I think he's well, probably 95% chance he's back by Saturday, and then that's where the value actually starts to come in for Norm. Emmanuel Quickly is a great name to add, obviously, with Brunson out, but when Brunson plays, is he startable? I don't know. Santi Aldama could be an interesting stream for today. If Tillman is out and with Jackson out, he is probably going to be an excellent stream for Wednesday. Not sure past that. Keon Johnson's a name to watch more for deeper leagues. Don't think he'd be startable Friday, Sunday, but we're watching what he's able to do because he's playing a lot of minutes and he's playing better than Archer Jackano. There's Shaden Sharp. I'll just throw his name in there. If he's not rostered, you roster him, you add him, you start him Friday, Sunday. And then the other one to watch with Utah is Simone Fontecchio. There is O'Shea Abaji who is going to start regardless, but Fontecchio is the guy who's ruled in for Wednesday, who is going to replace Markinen, who can be a deeper league sort of a hit. He's not a must roster by any stretch, but he is um, somewhat of a deeper league option there. All it is now is being nimble, staying on your toes, getting volume in, watching what you replace Friday, Sunday. Is that actually worth 
the move to get a guy from you know that's off the waiver wire to replace someone that you were starting anyway? What marginal increase do you get? Let's use fantasy points for an example. Is your guy going to score 25 and the guy you add off the wire is going to score 27? Is a two-point increase worth it? No, it's not. When you could get a 15-point player, 18-point player off the waiver wire for Saturday or Thursday, like that is better than a two- or three-point increase on Friday, Sunday. That is, and I don't know why I didn't think of this example here, that is the easiest way to explain it in a fantasy point setting. It works for category leagues as well, but for a fantasy point setting. If you upgrade your 10th starter on Friday who averages, say, 20 points, and the guy you get off the waiver wire gets 24, it's four points. Whereas that, So that all that means is for you to add someone on Thursday or Saturday, all they need to score is four fantasy points or more than four to be actually worth more than that move. And if they score 20 or they score 30, then that is just so far above. And if you add a Pelicans guy and they play both of those games, well, that that is as plainly spelt out as you could possibly get. So be really cautious. Like even when I say, hey, Mark Williams, Marvin Bagley, Drew Eubanks, yeah, they're all probably startable Friday, Sunday. But is the boost that they give you, is it big enough to justify skipping over adding if you can Wednesday, but for Saturday, Thursday, Saturday? Probably not. Probably not. I'll let you sit and think about that. Guys, follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and the Odyssey app. And if you're here on YouTube, you thumb it up. You leave those comments down below. And that's it. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.